You are listening to Islam tomorrow. We're broadcasting live today. Well, almost live. When you hear this program, make dua that we're still alive. Alhamdulillah. This is your host, Yusuf Estes, the National Muslim Chaplain. For the next few minutes, we're going to be talking on the subject of the da'wah. What is the da'wah? What's our responsibility? And how is the da'wah going here today in the West? We're here now with a lot of our brothers, and I'm assuming we have some sisters downstairs, right? And it's very, very crowded in here right now. And you heard the people, but you can hear them again. I'm going to give them a great big salam, Texas style. This is Texas Muslim going to give you the answer. So you tell me, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, y'all. Alhamdulillah. Okie dokie. I am from Texas, by the way. Bush country. Anyhow. Alhamdulillah. But I moved to Washington, D.C. And now, what we're doing is using the internet in a way to show Islam in English around the planet. We have a number of websites. We have a website called islamalways.com. That website links to all of our other websites. If you hear me mention a website name and you can't remember it, don't worry about it. Just remember Islam Always. And you'll find all of the other websites there. Islam Tomorrow, this is where we have the story of the priests and preachers entering Islam. This is where we have the articles. This is where we have a lot of the information about people who are coming into Islam. Islam Yesterday, that's where we have the audio and video programs that you can download and use for your own doubt. We have Chat Islam, where you can go online live and start chatting with people who are not Muslim, who would like to know about Islam. You can also be there and watch people make shahada because many of them do. It is not like pal talk. If you know it's pal talk, it is not like this. Because we have a lot of rules. It's not permissible in our website to attack any religion. Nor is it permissible to promote any religion. It's not permissible to promote any websites. If they do, we have many monitors helping us the people will disappear and you won't see them again on the on our site. We have this for a reason because we want the people to come and take their time and learn then make up their own mind if they'd like to be Muslim or not without any pressure, without any attacking, without any insults. I don't know how successful you may think we are. We like it. We first started on a Tuesday in February of 1999. By Thursday night, we gave our first shahada. Since that time until now, many, many people have entered the website and become Muslim with no other source. A lot of them became Muslim by also using our CDs like you're going to see out here tonight. And then a lot more of them came to programs like this or in the universities and then they got the CDs, and then they went to the website, and they were totally convinced. As you can imagine, it takes time. People have to know. So now I would like to begin our program in a minute. Accept everybody's fasting, by the way, and make everything easy for you in this beautiful month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed the complete deen of Islam more than 1,400 years ago. And a final statement from Allah comes something like this A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem, Al yawmu akmaltu lakum dinkum, wa atmamtu alaikum nifati, wa raditu lakum islamati. This phrase in the Quran, this part, it's not a, it's not an ayah, it's part of an ayah. 
this part of this ayah is so beautiful. It contains so much. But there's two times the word deen is coming in this the ayah. Al yawmu akmatu lakum deen akum. And at the end, ready to lakum islam ad deen. It ends with that word. Allah says, on this day, I have perfected for you your deen. I have conferred my biggest favor on you. And I have chosen for you to submit in Al-Islam. This deen, which is called Islam. Deen does not mean religion. This is a big problem we have with translations to English. Because when you point to these words in English and a person doesn't know the deen, he gets confused. He thinks you're just another religion. When you go to look for an automobile, you go to the street and there's all the car lots. Cadillac is here, BMW is here, Humvee over there, this kind, this kind, everything all around. You see all these cars, huh? But which one's best? And the answer is it depends on what you want and how much money you have. And actually none of them are best because every one of them is man-made and every one of them is going to break and every one of them is going to have to be repaired and every one of them is going to become worth less every time you drive it and every one of them eventually is going to turn back into what it started with which is a piece of metal. Right? Because they're not from Allah. They're from human beings. So when somebody's looking for a religion, he goes down the street and he sees these religions. Mine's better than his and his is la 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 la. It's the same thing. And when you say deen means religion, you just put Islam down real low out here on the car lot. Islam is not religion. It's much bigger. Deen is a complete way of life. And everybody has a deen if they believe in Allah or they don't believe in Allah. Everybody has a deen. Even the kuffar. And Allah said, when you don't argue with these kuffar. When they come with you, blah, 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 and they start talking stupid. Like, for instance, they said, we want to have, you know, interfaith dialogue. And you worship with us, huh? for one year and then we'll worship with you for one year what are you going to tell them did you hear it to you your deen to me, my deen. Somebody is mulhid. It means he is atheist. He has no belief in anything. You can still tell him, lakum dinakum waliyadeen. Yes or no? But he doesn't have a religion. Does he? But he has a deen, doesn't he? To you, your way of life. To me, my way of life. Islam is much bigger than a religion. It's a complete way of thinking and acting and believing and feeling. It's all encompassing. They use a term in English called holistic. Holistic. They want you to have this idea of you know, religion with medicine, with food, and all put it together, holistic. We have something better than holistic. We have deen. And Allah conferred the deen. Now, if you look in the Quran in Surah Al Imran, Allah says, In the deen in the law, he'll Islam. If you translate this, the only religion with the law is Islam, you make a mistake. Why? 
Because they're going to say, oh, well, the only religion with Jesus is Christianity. The only religion with Moses is Jewish. You see? It doesn't work. In fact, you mix them up. But if you translate it correctly, the only way of life that Allah is going to accept from you is that you obey Him and do His commandments and be on the way of submission and peace to Allah. This is the meaning of it. You know what happens? They shut up. You can't say anything. Because this is what the Bible says. Same thing. In fact, the people of Jesus' time were never called Christians. The Bible said they were never called Christians until they were going into Antioch with Paul and these guys who went out later, much later. Then the people who were their enemies called them Christians. The people of Antioch called them Christians. They used to call themselves the people of the way. You can read it in the books. It's called the Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament, in the Angel. They were called the people of the way. And they made a big W because it was a proper noun. And Paul said he used to kill the people of the way. You understand my meaning? No? The point is, if you said religion, you lose a lot. But if you said, Jesus called the people to the way of God, they have to say, that's true. Moses called the people to the way of God, that's true. Ibrahim, alayhi salam, he called the people to the way of God. And so Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi salam, said the same thing. He called them to the Deen, Deen al Haq, the way of truth. Is it beautiful? Wa kala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa mam yabtaghi ghayrul islam al dina fala yukbala minhu, wa huwa fil akhirti minhu khasawi. The translation, think again, the translation it means, and Allah is telling the people, Whoever wants a way of life other than the one that Allah wants him to do, submitting to Allah's commandments, then Allah is not going to have to take that from them. He won't. And in the next life, they'll be losers. That makes sense, doesn't it? They can't argue that. And how about this one? I'm going to give it to you. This is from the Bible. The Bible, what it says in English today. It's a prayer. There Jesus, alayhi salam, told them, pray like this. And say this in your prayer. God's will be done on earth like it is in heaven. God's will. Qadr of Allah. You're asking for the Qadr of Allah. You're asking for Allah's will. To be done here instead of what we want. Like Salat Istikhara, similar to the Salat Istikhara. It's what you're saying. And if they say, hmm, yeah, I believe that. So if you believe there's a God and you want to do what He wants you to do, this is what Islam means. They become very, very quiet because this is the first time they heard this message. Up to now, the message most people heard was just like me. The day that my father said, listen, we're going to do business with a man from Egypt. I said, good. And he's a Muslim. I said, bad. They are terrorists, hijackers, kidnappers. They don't believe in God. They worship a black box in the desert and they kiss the ground five times a day. We don't need this. My father kept saying, no, we need them to need, know this man. He's very, very nice. He's a good guy. When I met this man, I was surprised. It was very nice. And in three months' time, I learned that this man was very, very honest and straightforward, never cheating, not lying. 
and very considerate of everybody from a small person to a big person. From the rich to the poor, he treated everybody with a lot of class, a lot of dignity, which I never saw before. And I decided if this man becomes a Christian, we can make him a saint. As a matter of fact, we could make him an angel. But Allah had another plan. This man told me, I'll go to your religion if your religion is better than my religion. I said, really? He was using the word religion. I said, hmm, that's good. Because I got the best religion. He said, you do? I said, yeah. Because in Christianity, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to pray. You don't have to fast. If you don't want to give zakat, you don't have to. And you sure don't have to make hajj. Closest thing they got to hajj is to go to Disney World and do tawaf around Epcot Center. But he said... I'll go to your religion if it's better than mine, but you have to have proof. I said, proof? Religion is about faith, not about proof. He said, in my religion, we have both. I said, you mean to tell me you can prove there's a God? He said, we sure can. I said, what? I never heard anybody say that before, ever. So I thought he was crazy. Much new. How is this guy telling me he can prove there's a God? I learned a lot of things in those few months that I was with him. I brought in a Catholic priest, another friend of mine. And he was the first one to accept Islam. Catholic priest. I was shocked. The next one that said, I want to be a Muslim, was my own wife. I was more shocked. Then I found myself saying the same thing. But that wasn't the end. There was more. My father became Muslim after that. And he was somebody who used to be a minister ordained minister for the Christians and then I met another Catholic priest who also came into Islam after something like 8 or 12 years serving as a priest of a parish he became Muslim and then I met others from the Baptist studying at seminary school. He was in a seminary school studying to be a Baptist preacher, praying and asking God to guide him. He found a Quran in the library of the Baptist seminary in English. He read it. He left the seminary and he did Shahada and I met him. His name is Joe. We then met one who used to be the arch priest for the Orthodox Church here in New York and then down in Mexico. He was on the Mexican border here in California. And one day while well, he was with some of his friends, Muslim friends here in New York, they explained what's the real Islam. He started crying and said, this is the religion I've been looking for. And he left everything to become a Muslim. The stories go on and on. They go to our website and read these for yourself. This is not something that we made up to entertain you. These are real people, what they went through. Do you know why Muslims are suffering all over the world today? Because they left two things. And both of them really are one thing together. Dawah and what goes with it. We leave those two things, we'll be in this condition. Our children will not understand the deen. Their children will become something else. 
Our enemies will run all over us. And everybody will be stronger than us. And our Iman will be so weak, we will not be strong enough to tell two Zanatis in the street, we won't be able to tell them to move it out of the way. Because our Iman too, because we love the Dawah. How can I do Dawah? Your mind is asking, what can I do though? I'm in New York. And I'm Miss King, man. I got problems. You don't know my problems. We all got problems, brother. But we don't have the biggest problem. The biggest problem is for the people not to understand what does it mean when Allah said, You know what that means. They don't. The biggest problem is we didn't focus on Allah. We began to focus on what Allah created. And this is the problem. When we change, we change ourselves. Allah will change the condition. Like this. Would you like to see it become better? Really? Are you willing to work? Or are you just going to talk about it? When you walk out that door tonight, you're going to make a decision. Either you're going to be changed and working in the right way, or you're going to continue to go down the hill the wrong way. It's your choice. I made that decision when I was an old man already. I was almost 50 years old. My father was in his 70s when he made his decision. I gave shahada to a woman who was in her 80s when she made that decision. And this past year, I gave shahada to a 99-year-old woman. Ninety-nine is pretty old. I don't know if I'm going to beat that record or not. But you can make a decision too for you. And if you said, I'm already a Muslim, Allah knows best what you are. But are you a mu'min? Are you a real believer? You're going to know when you walk out that door. How? What do you do next? Because if you go back to the same bad habit of sitting there watching television under the air conditioner, complaining about what other people are doing, but you do nothing, then you're part of the problem. The one who solves the problem is the one who stands up straight and acts and believes like a Muslim. That's Dawah. I'm going to talk about real Dawah. Don't talk to me how you want to join me and travel around the world. Don't, I don't want to hear it, okay? I really don't want to hear it. Because if I came by your house tomorrow morning and said, let's go, you're going to have 100 excuses why you can't go. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm just telling you when you walk out that door right there, make a decision to act like a real Muslim. Because if you do that, then inshallah, Allah is going to change everything for you, your family, and for all of us. It's that simple. I know you've got a lot of questions. We don't have time tonight. But we have a lot of answers on those websites. And then if you still got questions, we have places where you can write the question, send it in, and eventually, after Ramadan, I'll try to get them answered. <laughs> it's a little hard right now, but we're working on it every day. When I leave here, it's not to go home and lay down. It's to go back to the internet and start working again. So inshallah, please make dua tonight and every night for the rest of this Ramadan that we, you and I, we're going to make a difference that we're going to start acting like real Muslims and not just in Tarawih. And by the way, is this far to come here for Tarawih? Is it far? Is it? Is it obligation? Allah said you must pray Tarawih in the masjid every day in Ramadan, yes or no? But is it far for us to treat each other with kindness? Is it far for us to give each other excuses instead of backbiting and is it far for us 
to pray our salah in jama'ah when we can. Do we? Eid salah. Eid is a part sunnah. But more people come for Eid than come for Jumaat. Yes or no? Do you see what our problem really is? We don't care. And we show it. And Allah doesn't like it. Let's make dua. Let's make real dua. Allah change us so that Allah can change our conditions. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasan wa fil akhirin hasan wa kina daban nar. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim. Well, Ibrahim and our family, Majid, I mean. Okay, um, I think we're out of time now. He wants me to do ten more minutes. How many would like ten more minutes? How many want me to be quiet to start the Torah way? Okay, let me save the file. Okay, this is... Uh, we're in Queens, right? What's the name of the mustard here? What a perfect name. You're not joking, are you? Man, this is too good. I said the right thing tonight, didn't I? I didn't even know what I was saying. Oops, 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 oops. Save it again. Okay. This takes a minute to do this. There we go. Now, while it's saving, I think I think what's a good idea is to tell you that we have more than just what I mentioned. We have also 24-hour broadcasting television on the Internet, 24-hour broadcasting audios, radio, and we also have programs that you can choose from and listen to whatever you want to listen to or go to our uh, on-demand and watch whatever show you want to watch. If you go to Islam yesterday, you're going to see so many videos and so many audios. You can also go to Hear Islam, Watch Islam, Chat Islam. All of these are our websites. I have one brother who works with me that's, that I pay him. Everybody else who works with me is volunteers. We have volunteers all over the world helping us do this thing. And you can join us. You can join us from wherever you are simply by making dua because it helps you can also join by going to the website and reading it every time you go to our website you raise the level of the status in the search engines like Google you can also help by making us our default page on your browser if you know what that means if you understand what that is make it the default so every time you sign on it goes to our website and raises it up another niche another niche another niche and then you can also Include the link to our website in all your email. So when the people read your email, any subject, at the bottom, islamalways.com, islamalways.com, and tell other people to do the same thing. This again raises it up, raises it up. Now I will tell you, our first website was torn down before 9-11. The kuffar used to attack our website, I call them kuffar because they know the truth and they lie against it. Okay? They're Christians and other groups who know the truth of Islam and they know and yet they lie. I'm not talking about the good Christians. I'm talking about some really bad people. They wiped out our whole website. We started all over again. Then in 2002 on September 11th, while I was up here, given a talk over in Manhattan, 55th Street, if you know where it is. You know what? They tore it down again. Erased it again. Only this time we had a backup. 
And since that time until now, that's why we have so many websites on so many servers. It's too hard to take them all down at once. If they try to take it down, we know how to move the pointers to go to others. So no matter what happens, it's still going to be there. Plus, we gave permission to all the other webmasters in the entire world to use our material free. So you can just go to any website that's Islamic website, you'll find the material and you can get it there. Because we, we know that if we put anything about money with it, then that's going to stop some people. We don't want to stop anybody. So alhamdulillah, it's working. Every day I'm getting information. Another person came to Islam, they see something we did, they heard some program we did, or they came to the website. Please help us do that, inshallah, that's a good thing. Usually people ask me questions because we have so many brothers here though. I think what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and ask the questions that most people ask me. Then I'll give you the answers. Is that okay? And we can do that in about six minutes and we'll be done. Ready? Okay. The first question. First question, it says, do Muslims have to grow the beard? No. No. Not the women. Oh, no, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't see that. Let me read it again. Do the Muslim men have to grow the beard? No. Allah grows the beard. They have to stop cutting it off. Next question. <laughs> Do the Muslims have to wear the hijab? No, not the men. Oh, it said women. Do the Muslim women have to wear the hijab? No. Just stay home. <laughs> Next question. Is smoking haram or just mahru? What is makhru? Do you know what's makhru? Allah hates it. Something bad. Allah doesn't like it. Is it haram or Allah just hates me because I did it? Huh? You know who says this? Who talks like this? The same one who will ask you, what about salah? And you tell him, brother, we, we don't see you for salah. He said, nah, Allah knows my heart. So we don't see you making salm, you're eating and drinking, it's Ramadan. Allah knows my heart. Allah knows my heart. Yeah, He does. He sure does. He even told Rasul Salaam what to tell people like that. Kul in kuntun tu hibun Allah fatabi uni yubikum Allah. Tell him if you really love Allah, then follow me. Then Allah will love you. You want Allah to love you or hate you? You want Allah to love you or hate you? Then put out the cigarette and shut up. Who cares what the legal ruling? You know it's not good. Do you know it's wrong? Huh? Are you smart enough to know that it's something bad? Huh? If Rasulullah was here right now, would you smoke in front of him? Would you? Would you offer him a cigarette? Then what are you asking a stupid question for? This is just another trick from Shaitan that they give this drug, it's a drug, to little children to make them think they're grown up. And then they get a habit from it, and then they go around getting cancer and give it to everybody else. Next question. How do you like it so far? <laughs> the best dawah. The best dawah is to call yourself to Islam first. Really. And then finally, here's a question. I'm a new Muslim. Which group should I join? 
Have you heard about this? He said, I heard about all these groups. Should I be a Shiite, a Sunni, a Sufi, a Gufi? It's a long list of names here. What should he be? Who knows which group is the right group? Raise your hand. You know which one? Which one? Who said Muslim? Allah called us Muslim in the Quran. If he called us Muslim in the Quran, is that good enough? That's it. And he said, yes, but brother, what about the Aqidah? Well, tell you what. If somebody really wants to know, Allah will guide them. But Allah did not appoint you or me as a judge over the other people. You don't open up their hearts and try to see what they have. Don't try to trick people into saying something so that you can say, Oh, Mutazla. It's, it's khawarij. It's, these people, this. Because then you're putting yourself in a group. If you want to come together, the first thing to do is stop judging each other. Alhamdulillah, in Islam, we don't have like in the other parts of the world. We really don't. Good Muslims don't look at somebody, what's their skin color? They don't do that. Good Muslims don't care what country you're from or what language you speak. But we still have this little problem over which kind of Muslim are you. And when they asked me, what kind of Muslim are you? I said, a fat one. You want to join me? We'll have some chocolate in the car. And when I came back in our country, my country, this country, from being overseas, I came in at one port of entry, and they took me aside. They meet me at the airplane, by the way. I get very good treatment. I don't need to show a passport anymore. When I come to this country, as soon as the door opens, they're standing right there. It's pretty good, huh? I was at American Airlines desk getting my ticket and she had to call to be sure I was cleared to go. And she waited online for a long time. She was talking about random selection. When she hung up the phone, she said, I have news for you, sir. I said, is it good or bad? She said, well, you're not ever going to have random selection again. I said, that's good news. She said, because you're always going to be selected. She was right. When I came back in, they took me aside and they said, well, where were you? I told them, did you meet any terrorists? <laughs> it's so stupid you want to just tell them, yes, of course we did. But if you do, you know what's going to be next. So, no, we didn't meet any terrorists. Okay. Did you see anything suspicious? Well, do you want me to include the fact that two people were standing outside the plane waiting for me. I think that was suspicious. Then they come to, which kind of Muslim are you? And I said, I'm just a plain Muslim. They opened the book. Now the government has a book about religion, especially Islam. I know because we've used it in the federal prisons. I've seen it in the military. In the places we've made dawah in the institutions over the last 14 years. I know all about the book. In fact, we have contributed information so they can build it up about Ramadan, Salah, and, you know, wudu, things like that. So I know they have this information, and they opened it up. And it has a list. Now, I know a lot of the names of the different groups of Muslims, but they had stuff I never heard of. How many of you heard about the Hebrewish Muslims? Huh? Rastafarians. Moorish science temple five percenters the Ansar Allah started right here in New York it's called the cult now nation of Islam the lost found nation of Islam a lot of names that you never heard of now you know Naqshbandi, Diobandi, Chesley, Durwish you heard about those but you didn't hear about the new ones did you? so they're asking me which kind of Muslim are you 
said, just a Muslim, a plain Muslim, one who submits to Allah. They said, no, which group are you? I said, I'm a Christian Muslim. I said, what? I said, well, I used to be a Christian. Then I became a Muslim. The guy nodded his head. He wrote something down. He said, okay, you can go. But on the day of judgment, an angel, Malayaka, asked you, which kind of Muslim are you? You better just say, Muslim, Muslim. Three questions will be asked in the grave. The first question Who is your Lord? What is your deen? Who is your brother? Subhanallah alayhi wa That's good enough for me. Good enough for you. Let's work together to be real Muslims. What do you say? I love all of you for all. And please forgive me for any mistakes. I didn't come here to try to teach you anything. You're my teachers. And I didn't come here to cause a problem. I hope we solve some problems. And I hope, inshallah, that you'll take some advice from an old man that really cares about his younger brothers. Until next time, I love all of you for a lot. Wassalamu alaikum wa